Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to build line Linux. So we are going to look at what Linux is and everything that has to do with Linux. Next up we need uh, to build stuff so we actually have the lib standard C++ as well. Uh, so let's see here, we will uh, uh, unpackage that one as well. Uh, lib. lib. Do we have lib standard? Uh, it, also, it actually says that it should be a part of the GCC compiler. Do we have a lib standard? Uh, lib std cc version 3 could that be it yes it it can um okay so we need to enter the build directory here again and um, it actually tells us to uh, create a new build directory so let's do that we create a new build directory and then we will uh, configure from lib standard v3 configure and we will use the host again our uh, target let's see here lfs target we will have our prefix again we want to build into the tools directory we will disable uh, multi-lib we will disable able nls we will disable lib std cxx threads so that's the threads for this library disable also the lib std std uh, cxx psh and we will build with gxx include there and that should be tools and then our lfs target slash include slash g plus plus slash 8.2.0 so what does everything here does uh, the threads we know we don't want the threads library it's not required at this point and we also want to remove p c h uh, prevents the installation of pre-compiled include files which are not including uh, not needed at this stage so uh, that's what this means and we also want to put uh, we want to use that directory for our include when it was gxx include here so let's see if we can configure this little package so we build uh, g uh, lib standard c++ library from the gcc directory like this uh, so this is a little bit of a new way to do it and then we will make that so i guess that gcc has a lot in it and even if you build gcc will not build all parts of the gcc and that's I guess that we earlier turned off um, uh, building libraries because we didn't want to build all of them but this library is required to build the rest of the system because all of the tooling uh, or a lot of the tooling actually uses C++ in the build process so uh, it's required to have both C and C++ in order to build uh, Linux and uh, executables in Linux. So now we have built uh, lib 
C for uh, C++. So we will make install that as well. And there we go. Now that we have built these packages, we have actually built everything that we need, the bare minimum that we need, the temporary packages that we need to build the system. So now we have built the compiler required and the assembler and the libraries required to build the system. So now that we have all the binaries and lib libraries to actually build things, we will do pass number two with our temporary tool chain. We will now build the new uh, tool chain, the actual, um, the actual compiler, the actual binaries and so on. So we need to start with bin utils as we did uh, earlier, but we will need will now build bin utils with the new compiler. So we will start up by saying that we want to use LFS uh, target GCC, and we uh, want to use the the R build. Here as well. So this should also be the LFS target R. And we want the ran lib. Also, another part of the build system should also use the LFS one. Uh, LFS target ran lib. And then we do the configure. We do prefix tools as usual. We will disable the uh, translations again. We'll disable the warnings as errors. We will use the lib path of tools slash lib. And we will do the build with sysroot. So there we have uh, set up the bin utils and we will make those. So what we said here was that we wanted to build bin utils uh, using our uh, cross compile system. So with the new <laughs> compiler that we built and assembler and so on. We also want to use our new lib path for all the new C libraries and C++ libraries. And we want to use sysroot. So we will look for all the shared objects required for the build. Um, and we will not, we will build them into the bin package. We will, uh, so it will be a separate build. It will not be uh, using the shared libraries. So this is the second build of the bin utils and this will take some time as well. There we go, we now have built bin utils. We will make install those. And then we will have a few more steps to prepare for the next chapter. We will do uh, make CLD, so that's a specific um, directory we want to clean out. And then we will uh, do the same with that directory, but we will build with the lib path uh, of lib underscore path of slash usr slash lib and lib. So that's uh, in building the LD. Um, with those paths in mind. So it can actually find things in those paths uh, in the next chapter when we actually are building it into the new system. And then we will copy verbose LD and LD new into our tools bin directory. So now we have copied that in there. 
So that's prepared. Now we need to build GCC for the second time. Oh, and um, we need to do the same preparation as last time. Mm. Do we need extract the file here first of GCC. A lot of directories. when we had done that and then we go into GCC and we will cat GCC limit X H GCC G limit H and GCC limit y h two dear name uh, and then lfs tar uh, underscore target gcc print lib gcc file name file dash name and include fixed limits h let's see here no such file or directory let's see if i typed it correctly so we'll cat all these. Uh, that seems reasonable. Into dear name and oh, I forgot one uh, of those. Yes, target GCC. Print lib gcc file name and that. Oh, it should be a specific backtick. It's one of those. Um, so it actually run that command like that. Okay. <laughs> so I wonder what that did. So it cats all of those into the directory name of the libgc profiler. So let's see what this, our new compiler actually prints when we print libgcc file name. Okay. So. Does that mean that we, if we go to tools, lib, gcc, and that lib, gcc, a, include fixed and limits dot h cat okay so we copied a lot of things into that file that's interesting i will create this uh, fix uh, includes again um, so now I have followed the exact same steps that we did last time to set up GCC. And now we need to tell it that we want to use the new compiler. So this should use the LFS uh, target GCC. 
it use, should use the new uh, C++ compiler at uh, LFS target uh, G++ G++ and we should use the new R at LFS target uh, R and the new Ranlib. I think we actually export these now because we know that they work. CC. So this should be LFS target GCC. We export the new uh, C to LFS target E. We export. R and this target R and export and lib to this target and lib. So let's configure our compiler. We do it with prefix slash tools, so we want to build it there, with local prefix, again, tools, and with native system header dir, again, tools include this time, enable languages, so not all languages, just C and C++ again. We want to disable the lib std cxxph. We want to disable multilib. We want to disable bootstrap. And we want to disable libcomp. So the new things we did have was here was disable uh, PSH, and that's some of these pre-compiled headers from uh, lib standard uh, G C++. And we also want to disable bootstrap. So the native builds for GCC, um, they usually do bootstrap. And this does not compile GCC, but compiles it several times and uses programs uh, in the first round to compile itself. And we don't want to do that um, because we uh, it will not <laughs> not be able to do that at this point. So we will disable that uh, and run it without that feature. So we will. Um, Create the mic file again. We'll run make in order to build our compiler again. The second time around.
and we're done with the build of the GCC and this second build time took a lot longer so we actually built a GCC or a compiler that was much more complete than the first time around. The first time around we built something very temporary that we didn't use for any real building. Now we have built a GCC built by that temporary GCC that is much more complete. This can build a lot of different packages, not just uh, GCC. So back in the day when they are, were compiling things on PDP 11, they came up with this language C and they figured out how to write something in C. And then that compiler could in, send, in turn also build itself and be more and more complex. And now we are at a stage where we still need a compiler to build a compiler. And now we have built a good compiler that we can use going forward. So we have made this, we will install it also, so we will have that in our system. Then we need to actually go into the system and look up where we install this GCC. It will probably be in the tools directory and that GCC will, will need to link that up uh, to a new file uh, because in the G in the different packages that you built, you will come across packages that will require you to use the command cc. And cc is just a compiler in the system and we want that to be synonym to gcc because we have built gcc and we want it to use that. So we will take GCC and we will create a new link to bin CC. So now we have CC uh, pointing to GCC. So now we have both of those. So let's head back to our uh, mount point here. We used uh, LFS sources work. So this is our work directory. And here I now want to create a little bit of a program. We do a main C here. Uh, we remove that main. Uh, I didn't save it. Um, dummy C and I will create something that has include and standard io.h and we do int main and here we will print f hello world and then we will end that program and we will do cc dummy and it compiles so it's important to during the steps here actually check that things still compiles like we have a uh, compiler that is valid. We will read this again and grep for our tools and directory and so slash tools like that. And we can still see that we use that interpreter to create that uh, program and we will also try to run it and we get hello world. So now we have built a compiler that can build programs that can run. Next up, we are going to build some tests so we can test our compiler. I think I will break this video here. So this video will be a series with lots of different videos. I hope that you found this video interesting. I hope that you learned a little bit more about Linux and uh, I hope that you like this video. Give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. And I really hope to see you in the next video.